Hi sisters, Alex here and welcome back to my channel. I'm never going to say that ever again. Oh look, I'm not wearing any makeup. Now you can see all my flaws and insecurities. So in today's video, I thought it would be a really great idea to follow James Charles makeup tutorial. And despite the hate he's getting, he really seems like a sweet person who's trying to learn from his mistakes. So let's get into the video. Disclaimer, I suck at makeup. The one step that is absolutely vital to any good makeup routine is skincare. And the way I always like to prep my skin before putting on makeup or before videos is with a moisturizer. I'm just gonna go into my knuckle and grab a little bit on there and just place some dollops all over my face. I did wash my hands before starting to film this video and I'm just going to rub this all over. So the first thing, moisturizer. I do not have moisturizer, but I have this serum. So what I'm going to do is apply some of this on my face. Yes, I did clean my face before doing this video. Okay, so this thing is applied and my face is moist. Another word that I'm never going to use again. The next step is going to be primer. And for today's video, I'm gonna talk about the Benefit Professional Primer. I don't really use primers that often, but when I do, I always reach for this one. It is one of my all-time favorites. And this is a silicone-based primer. Obviously, it is called Professional. So because of the silicone, this is gonna act as kind of a barrier between the moisturizer that you just put on your skin and all the makeup, which both protects your skin and the silicone will kind of fill in your pores. I'm just gonna grab a little pea-sized dollop I'm gonna place this primer in the areas that I have most skin texture and pores, and that is going to be kind of right here on the cheek region, right in the middle of the forehead and on the chin. But what I'm not gonna do is put it on the nose, and I'll get to why in a few short seconds. Now, we're going to use primer. I don't know what kind of primer is this. I know it's just, like, it's from Morphe. It's actually really cheap, I think it would be more expensive. And we're going to apply this on our face. Except the nose. I don't know if I applied too much or not. Okay, we're done with the primer. Basically what we're gonna do here is what I like to call priming the nose. That is why I did not put any actual primer on my nose because I feel like a lot of times primer on the nose makes everything kind of slip and slide around, which is obviously the opposite of the goal. So I'm gonna grab a really, really full coverage, heavy duty concealer. And I'm gonna grab like probably this shade right here with a more packing brush. And what I'm gonna do is literally just go all over my nose and really pack this in. Let's freaking... Conceal. Conceal. Let's prime conceal our nose. So let's put this all over our nose. Okay, I'm going to use that freaking mirror because I can't do it with this thing. I'm going to put everything in place with a, with a sponge. <laughs> Ooh. 
Wow. <laughs> Let's see what else we got in plan today. So the next step is going to be a foundation. And for today's video, I'm gonna be using the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. I am personally in the shade Nude. But the one thing I would like to point out about this before actually putting it on is that this is a silicone-based foundation, just like our silicone-based primer. I personally really, really love how sponges apply foundation to the face, and I much prefer a sponge over a brush. I okay, so next thing, I don't know what based foundation. So we're going to add some foundation on our back of our hand. And now we need a beauty blender or makeup sponge. We're going to put this on our fucking face. I think I need to use a mirror again. the spot okay hopefully I'm... this looks ridiculous for fuck's sake come on, come on. do something okay perfect our next step is going to be concealer, so I'm just going to apply this like normal right in my under eyes and in the center of my face to kind of brighten everything up. And the most popular question that I got with concealer is how do I set it in place and make sure it doesn't look cakey and creasy? The Shave Tape Concealer is one of my all-time favorites because it's full coverage, blends out easily, but feels very, very light on the skin. I will say though, it is drying. I have oily skin, so this works perfectly fine for me, but if you have dry skin, a concealer like this is gonna be your absolute worst nightmare, and that's why it's so important to do research on the different formulations of products beforehand. A really great alternative that I love for when I'm having drier skin days is the Becca Aqua Luminous Concealer. It is kind of medium coverage, but it blends out beautifully, has a very, very hydrating type of formula to it. I absolutely love that for doing dewy looks or also if I'm wearing no makeup at all and just want to conceal a few pimples, it is really, really great. So, this guy again. We put this here. That's what he did. I think, yeah. We put it here. I put it here. Someone's talking outside, and I do not know if you can hear it on camera. Hopefully not. Damn it. I put it in place with a pretty blender. Look, I'm a fucking makeup guru, and I'm telling you how to apply your fucking concealer. Sorry if anyone gets offended by the way I'm using this one, but at least I'm not using a kitchen one. And with that same exact beauty blender, still damp, I'm gonna dip it right into that powder and I'm just gonna push this right underneath the eye. Using a damp beauty sponge to press powder into the face as opposed to a brush or a powder puff was honestly probably one of my favorite makeup tricks that I have ever learned to date. Thank 
Schlager. Sponge. Why a little bit under your eye? Now my eye hurts even more. Ow, Oxy. Why is everything so blurry? Hopefully I'm applying this right. Fucking pop. I really like to go in with a light spread of MAC Fix Plus. I feel like this really does a good job of kind of melting all the powders into the skin and once again, eliminating that cakiness. And then I just go into my fan and make sure to dry it right off before moving to the next step because as much as I do love a wet and dewy base, obviously having a wet face is gonna mess up any powder products later on. Now, we're just using this, just a little bit, right? Not too much, because we don't want to finish it, just a tiny bit. And now, let's use our sister fan. done let's see our next step i'm actually gonna go in and i'm going to bronze my face using my benefit hula bronzer and my morphe m527 brush this is a very very big fluffy brush which allows us to get all over color but i'm just going to dip it right in tap it off because you don't want too much on there but then i'm going to go in right on the cheekbone and kind of place that powder on there I'm also going to follow that bronzer up and bring it onto the sides of my face and on my forehead as well, kind of all over the place. The bronzer. Bronzer. So he said for the bronzer to apply it on two. Mm. Okay, and bring it up. I should apply more, okay, up to the forehead, and then back to the other cheek. Now we got our bronze face. <laughs> Okay. Dip into mostly this shade, but just a slight tiny bit of this one. Tap it off, and I'm gonna be much more precise with the placement of my brush, and that is contouring. I'm gonna imagine that there's a line right here from the top of my ear down to the corner of my mouth, and I'm gonna place my brush right here and focus the most amount of color right here. We really wanna make sure we're blending upwards as opposed to downwards. So, I just wiped my face with. I think I put either this one or this one. I'll go with this one because it's bigger. You know what they say the bigger the brush, the bigger the hole. <laughs> with my life what the fuck has happened with this i want my money back i didn't even drop it i just like it was all right when i bought it and one day it was just cracked i think it worked like this i'm sorry if anyone gets offended and he said blend it upwards like this so imaginary line. I'm doing it upwards. I'm 
The other one. Holy shit. <laughs> For fuck's sake. I think I should have a fight around like hair as well. Or not. Whatever. And now, let's see what the fuck is going on there. I'm also going to use a little bit of that contour to kind of chisel out my hairline a little bit and fake it as if it was a little bit lower. Mm -hmm. I'm also going to take this powder and run it right underneath my jawline. Well, it's a jawline. Mm -mm, it's too much. Okay, that's better. I'm gonna take the contour powder on the fluffy end of this brush and start by blending in two lines on kind of the top of my nose on top of the bridge. If you're someone like me and you're trying to kind of fool the eye into thinking that your nose looks a lot smaller, you definitely do not want to follow your natural nose shape in this situation and you kind of want to place the contours where you wish your nose looked like in the first place. So for me, I'm placing this on the top of the bridge and the closer you put the two lines together, the more tiny and pinched your nose is gonna look. It's going to look absolutely ridiculous. For fuck's sake. Maybe this works. Okay. Let's make it round. I don't have a fair nose. And then let's use the rest too. Beautiful. Next step. I'm just gonna apply a light layer of blush right on the tops of my cheekbones. Make sure to not put too much on. A light wash of color can look very, very beautiful, but obviously if you put too much, you can look like a circus clown and that is never the goal. You see, this brush, I think this is the only proper brush I have because I, on this brush package, it said blush, it said um, brush for blush. So yeah, that's the only proper one I thought. So oh, once again, I'm gonna grab my MAC Fix Plus and I'm gonna give my face a light spritz of water. Having a wet base is gonna make the highlighter stick on very, very nicely. I could dip my face on the water and it would be less wet. And I'm going to grab my Anastasia So Hollywood. You guys know this is my all-time favorite with my Morphe M501 brush. I'm going to dip right into the highlighter, making sure to get a lot on the brush. And then I'm also going to spritz that brush lightly as well to really make sure it is super, super metallic. And then I'm just going to place this shade right on the top of my cheekbone. And you can see... By the end of this video, I have no setting spray left. Side note as well before I forget and move on, when it comes to highlighting your nose, instead of using the same brush like the M501 that you use on your cheeks, grab a pencil brush or a really tiny brush like this one. Whoops. <laughs> I mean, it looks good, hopefully. Finally, to finish off our base, we're going to lightly bake our face, but because we're using more powder, you guys know the drill. 
You know what they say, kids? One bottle of setting spray per makeup look. Is the fan? <laughs> like I spent five hours in the sun with no sunscreen. If you're like me and you have normal or oily skin, baking can be a really, really great technique that not only helps your makeup last longer, but also kind of brightens and enhances everything just a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Once again, using my damp beauty blender and dipping into that powder, I always like to start off by placing mm -hmm. this bake right on the sides of my nose to enforce mm -hmm. the highlights, which once again, further the illusion of a pinched and snatched nose. Oh, okay. If you're someone who is just starting off with contouring or is struggling with placing the contour in the right place, I'm going to grab a little bit more powder and just pack this right underneath the line of my contour. And when I wipe this off in a little while, it's going to kind of brighten up that entire area and just clean up the contour, which just makes it look a little bit more defined and a little bit more cut and snatched. So my first step of my eye makeup is always my eyebrows. The first rule of thumb is that the inside of your brow should always align with the outside of your nostril. So if you can see on this side right here, it starts right when I align my brow pencil. If we move over to this eye, we can see that they align once again perfectly. So I'm just gonna draw one yes. little line to mark the center of my brow. The next rule of thumb is that when looking forward, the beginning of your brow arch should align perfectly with the outside edge of your pupil. And as you can see, they do. Moving over to the other side, you can see, bingo, right here. So I'm just going to make my mark. And finally, for the tail of your brow, if you hold your brow pencil at the corner of your nose and hit it at the corner of your eye, your brow should touch just like that. So once again, coming to the side, if I hold my pencil right like this, I'm gonna want my brow tail right there. Oh no. Oh no. For fuck's sake. So. Mm -hmm. So it's here, right? Don't you know? My pupil is here. Oh no! Oh no 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 no! And he's here. And then... Here. And here. What am I supposed to do now? My eyebrows don't go like that and then like that. They just go straight like this. Which is funny. I'm gonna go straight like this. Oh, as much as I can because I ran out of the eyebrow pencil somehow. Don't even use that much eyebrow pencil. Then we're going to do this. Okay, hopefully that's good enough. I like to take my spoolie and brush the hairs downwards, and then I like to do the top of the brow. I always like to make sure that I'm brushing the hair away so I can really see the area that I need to fill in, because if I do it this mm -hmm. way, it's really easy to sometimes go above the brow, and then your brows just keep getting thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker, and that is usually not the best oh, look. No. I also have brow gel. I'm a cool dude. Oh my god. My eyebrows look so fucking ugly. 
I always like to take a brow gel. I'm gonna be using the Benefit 24 Hour Brow Setter. I really like this one because it is like cement for your brow hairs. It really locks it in place. And I'll hey. <laughs> Okay, what is the next thing, master? Now the last of my brow routine, which is always my favorite part, is cleaning them up. To do this, I'm just gonna grab a flat top concealer brush like this. This is the Morphe M432 and your favorite full coverage concealer. For me, it is Tarte Shape Tape, and I'm just gonna put a little bit of a dollop of this on the back of my hand, get a little bit on with that brush, and then I'm just gonna go right in and start cleaning up that brow. Once I'm satisfied with the line, I always like to take mm -hmm. the excess of that concealer on that same exact brush mm -hmm. and put the remainder of it right on my eyelid. And I'm mm -hmm. gonna use this concealer today as an eyelid primer. I'm gonna dip this into a little bit of my setting powder, tap off the excess, and I'm just going to make sure that concealer is set right in place. I'll do my eyeshadow off camera and I'll be back because I have my own style. Okay, so I applied plain black eyeshadow. Okay, oh, oh, oh. Just a tiny bit of eyeshadow and hair. Oh no. Fuck it. What I see in his makeup is that he has highlight the hair in the corner of the eye in a corner of the eye and also here and here perfect Do the same thing on the other side. Great. Now the other one is stronger. Perfect. It looks. <laughs> it looks better than I expected. I thought it would look much worse. Actually, it looks great. You're kidding me. And then. Once we're happy with the overall shape of the wing, following the theme of this video, mm -hmm. now we get to clean it up. I'm gonna grab my flat top concealer brush okay. once again, a little bit more shape tape concealer, and I'm just going to carefully mm -hmm. go right below that wing and carve it out. I don't know until today that you can clean and make your wing look great with concealer. You learn something new every single day. Amazing. It's a bit grey, but... Uh... And then he applies something that is important. I'm not going to apply the same thing because I have my own makeup look so I'm going to play a bit of black in the bottom part ah amazing <laughs> horrible My eyes hurt from so much makeup. Using a nude liner in your waterline is gonna really open up your eyes, make them pop, and make them look bigger. I have a nude liner, but it doesn't go with my makeup, so I'm using a black one. Who doesn't love black? 
eyeliner The first step of applying lashes is always to give them a good curl using whatever curler you want. I just applied eyeliner, like... Uh... If my light eyeliner would take off on this... Going in with the wand, once again, I'm gonna tilt my head back so I have really easy access to my lashes. I'm gonna start by bringing this wand in, starting right at the root of the lash, almost in my upper waterline, and just wiggling it upwards. I'm not applying fake lashes, that's for sure. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe off my bake because that has been on my face for quite a long time now. So you can imagine what we're gonna do. This one has to be this off finally. If my eyeliner is running down because of this thing i'm going and personally beat up james charles <laughs> it's your lucky day boy the first lip hack i have for you guys today is slightly overlining your lips using a darker lip liner than the lipstick shade you plan on using here's one problem i don't have a lip Pencil, exact color. When overlining your lips, I always like to start at the cupid's bow to just kind of build up the natural lipstick? shape and just go I mean, right I outside of the natural lip line. I have one, but I have no idea where it is. So I'm going to either use my eyeliner with the lipstick or my lip pencil. But I'll go with the lip pencil and I'll have a super ombre look. Said right above, wait, mm. okay, that works. Oh, holy fuck, <laughs> that's a funny look. Then the lipstick. I feel like I'm five year old <sighs> doing makeup. And of course, just apply that lipstick right in the center of your lips, making sure to blend together the lipstick with the lip liner for that natural ombre look. Nah, sis, this ain't it. Because this one is darker than my lip liner. Oh my god, my face. I'm going to apply it on top of my other lipstick. Okay, it definitely looks much better than before. Once your makeup is all complete, make sure all of your powders are wiped off and then just go ahead and give your face a nice and good and very, very generous squirt. The 15th time we're using this. Tiny. So this is all for today, thank god. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't enjoy it, give it a thumbs up. I got all my social media down in the description. Also my music channel is down there. Tell me down in the comments if you prefer a heavy, full coverage, three layers of foundation makeup or just a light eyeliner and mascara makeup subscribe to my channel here watch my last video here and see you next week bye